Hi Aquarius, welcome to your 2018 tarot forecast. It's Rena here. And uh, this is a spread that I created specifically for this type of reading. Um, so I will tell you the positions after the fact. I'm just going to lay it out right now. Some of the cards may not be in range because of uh, the way my setup is, but I will certainly uh, let you see them when I get down to it. Okay, so let's look at these cards. The top level are all past influences coming into 2018. So whether it's, uh, you know, from December 2017 when I'm recording this, or just, um, who knows, it could be from 10 years ago. But these are things maybe that you still need to work on or that you've recently kind of uh, gotten over. I would say, though, that uh, for the most part, since I'm looking at it as influences, either, uh, yeah, it could be something that you resolve that is still kind of um, shaping the way 2018 turns out for you. So let's look at this. One of these cards is the Five of Pentacles. And this is a card connected to poverty consciousness, lack consciousness. Um, and it can be someone who is too concerned with the material, not enough uh, concerned with the spiritual dimension. And um, I think that there are a lot of people who are working on this, who are learning about the law of attraction. I'm reading a book right now that doesn't really use that term, but it's all about that. It's really about anything in your life. Like if you're looking to fall in love, it's the same thing. It's this idea that you are understanding that things are not happening to you, that you have a direct uh, active involvement in how you attract things into your reality, that you can co-create your reality. Because I do like to use the term co-creation. I do think that there are some things that um, are beyond our control, in this lifetime, maybe our higher self uh, orchestrated them before we came here. Who knows? It really doesn't matter. But I do think there are certain things that are faded, like certain people were meant to meet. Having said that, it doesn't absolve us from responsibility to take charge of our own lives. You know, it's it's not either or. And too many people get caught up in that thing of like, oh my God, I have to know what's going to happen to me. Um, I think for Aquarius. If you find that you still have an issue with needing to know what's going to happen, like there's a sen sense of con trying to control outcomes, uh, being a fixed sign, I've seen this personally when I've done like uh, private readings that a lot of times it's the fixed signs that want to know what's going to happen the most. And the more you can be really totally chill and just like, okay, I'm... I'm not, I don't need any specific thing to happen. I want certain things to happen, and I hope that they do, but I don't need them to happen in order to be okay, and I don't need to know what's going to happen as if um, I need everything to know everything in advance, because this is kind of like that sense of need for uh, security, but also it's that continuity, which is connected with a sign like Aquarius, a fixed sign, 
that wants things to stay the same. They don't want those changes. Well, you know what, Aquarius? You're going to have a solar eclipse in February in your sign. So you're going to have to learn to deal because you're having changes. Like you're having shakeups. You had a lunar eclipse last uh, uh, what was it? Yeah, last August, August 7th, okay. And you may have been feeling those reverberations to this day. Um, Leo is your opposite sign. So, if you know, if it's the um, form's in opposition, so it does make contact with you. And that has been the source of eclipses, too. We had the, the one... In, in August, the solar eclipse. Now we're going to have a, a lunar eclipse at the end of January. So you are being um, directly hit by these eclipses. Eclipses either bring things out or bring things in. Lunar out, solar in. But those are just uh, buzzwords, keywords. They really go way beyond that because um, you're looking at change. So let's just like sum it up as change. Uh, you know, even if something leaves your life, something's going to come in. It's not like, you know, you just have a, a, a loss and no gain. So change for fixed signs is like a little bit um, problematic as, an, as a concept. And you have to have to make room for that in your mind and be okay with that and you'll be fine. And you may still be dealing with these issues with, you may have enough money, but you may still be thinking, oh man, I need to make more money. Um, and in personal relationships, feeling like, oh, I can't meet the person and I'm too old. I, I'm, you know, I'm not good looking enough to meet somebody. You know, all of the, the, the uh, limiting beliefs that go through our heads. That's exactly what the Five of Pentacles is about. And it's usually in a shallow, you know, with shallow things because it's taught the limiting beliefs uh, because, you know, the pentacles are dealing with physical things. So it's like, I don't have enough this. I don't have enough to attract um, to me those things, material things and love, but basing it on, on surface things. So uh, please, if you resonate with that, please make it a point in 2018 to try to conquer that because you will be amazed at, at you know, you can flip that script like in a, in a heartbeat. Um, another card that I have for you last year is Three of Cups. And um, this is a card that um, for some people there could be a, a lover's triangle and again, with that, that Five of Pentacles, you may be embroiled in something like this because you feel this is the best you can do. And the irony of that is it can lead to more of the same, more feelings of lack. If you hang on to a situation where, you, and you don't want to be in a triad or a, you know, you're, you're not a polyamorous person. You're, you're just there because you're afraid of losing, of being alone and not having anybody, uh, What really what can happen is you can end up feeling twice as bad than if you would be alone. Um, that's, that's what happens. When you honor yourself, I think that you will always uh, attract good to you. Um, I just think that that's... It's, doing otherwise is a fear-based mentality, going back to that Five of Pentacles. The other thing the Three of Cups could be talking about is too much partying. Even though it's in the upright position, it could be excessive um, celebration. You know, this is a kind of celebration. However, let's look at it positively. Maybe you had something that you uh, needed to celebrate. Maybe you uh, broke away from a negative relationship and you have been getting back in touch with your friends and, and possibly were with somebody who discouraged you from being with your friends. That's always um, uh, something that may have happened. Um, the Three of Cups to me also is a card of networking. So if you, uh, you know, were in a specific type of job, you may have uh, been in contact with people more than you normally have been, and that, that has been 
uh, something that you did to increase your success. So more social uh, activity for you, for whatever reason. And another card is Page of Wands. Maybe hearing some news that was really uh, put you into a good place. Whether it was a new job or, or a new something that you had started, like uh, your own business really took off, and you know right from the ground from the. Right from the start, it took off, and um, just that sense of uh, maybe even connecting with somebody who is a fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, and having kind of that hitting it off with them, really kind of exchanging emails or phone calls, and feeling that sense of enthusiasm almost like you're coming back to life you're feeling this sense of um, happiness in life because then I did get this and this is the card this is your card so hope restored healing and it could be because of some conversations that you've been having uh, whether it's romantic whether it's business it doesn't matter or business transactions that have made you realize that you can do something. You know, another thing it could be is that um, with the Five of Pentacles, you may have gone through a financial rough patch. And uh, through looking at the Three of Cups, through uh, your connection, through other people, maybe you just kind of uh, put, put the word out to people that you know, hey, I'm doing this thing, and it worked. You know, never, never um, underestimate the power of having an idea and just putting it into action and how that can, you know, propel you forward. So let's look at the trends of 2018 for Aquarius. We have um, the Empress card. This is a card of crea creativity and abundance right below that five of pentacles so going from lack consciousness to abundance but also somebody who is welcoming in their good that's one of the things when we talk about prosperity is that you have to believe you deserve it and you can't push it away and so something may have happened that uh, allowed you to do this this could be love this could also be motherhood, or I, I, you know, maybe I should just keep it as um, parenthood. But the sense of maybe being pregnant or giving birth in 2018, or being uh, being with somebody who's um, caring, you know, who has your child, it's connected to the this. It's connected to Venus, so love matters. But also, as I say, it could be money, abundance. Um, and it's connected to the signs Taurus and Libra. They may figure, someone of that sign may be figuring into your life. And we have the Judgment card. This could be you're receiving some kind of uh, word on a judgment that relates to divorce or um this is cause and effect. And so this is connected to karma. Uh, karma means action. That's all it means. It doesn't mean punishment. That's why we, we talk about good karma and bad karma. What you do before affects what you receive now. Um, so if you have planted seeds for some kind of endeavor on your own, you may be reaping the rewards. And with the with the um, three of <laughs> the three of empress, <laughs> with the empress card, that could be something that is very um, financially beneficial to you. Also, if you might, you know, one thing too, if you're looking for love. The Three of Cups could be that you meet somebody in a social situation. And maybe, uh, you know, the Judgment card is right under that. And now 
uh, you, it's like a rebirth for you because that, that uh, star card is a card of healing, as I said. Now, interesting. Nine of Swords. Now, you are Swords as air sign. But um, going back to the Empress card, one of the, the cards it connects to is Libra, a fellow air sign. So um, if that's the person, that could be... But this is a card that we associate with anxiety. So it's possible that, you know, you're having anxiety about success. This is something that I really want to just bring up briefly because I think this is extremely important. You may have an amazing experience in 2018, Aquarius. Let's say you start your own business and it's really going gangbusters from day one. Or maybe it starts humbly, but then it takes off like crazy. Whatever. Um, it can feel scary to succeed if you're used to what the Five of Pentacles relates to. If you're used to lack and all of a sudden you gain a lot, it can feel very uncomfortable. And trust me, you have to, you have to like be aware of this and be prepared for this because it could definitely um, come about. And it's all about worthiness. It's all about being able to receive. A lot of people think that they, oh, I really want a lot, you know, I really want a boost to my income or I really want love in my life. But when it shows up at their front door, they, they push it away. Uh, so just like I'm talking about money, it could be love. You could really want it, but then when it shows up, it makes you nervous, you know, like the Nine of Swords, because it's not what you're used to. And plus, you know, here's a big one. It goes against the narrative that, you know, whatever that story is, that sob story. So um, it kind of blows that out of the water. So it's something that I think is very common, and it's kind of a hump to get through, to get over. But, you know, that might be your challenge in 2018 is being able to simply... Um, accept good coming into your life without pushing it away and without feeling anxious about it. So if that's the case, uh, you're in a good place because um, that's something that you can do as long as you're conscious that you're, that you're feeling it. And then the other thing is the Knight of Pentacles. You may be a busy little beaver working your butt off in uh, 2018, and that's a good thing. This is, the Knight of Pentacles is a person who is very driven to um, work. Uh, but, you know, it's funny, it's connected to Taurus. That was one of the, the cards connected to the Empress. So I don't know if any of you know any Taurus people, or if you think you might meet them. Maybe you haven't met them yet. But it's, it's a reliable character. It's somebody, if this is somebody else... They will tend to be a male under the age of 40, earthy, maybe Taurus, prominent, and very much sometimes in a rut, sometimes a little bit dull, uh, in terms of like if we compare it to like a Leo or something like that that's larger than life. I mean, they're just like all about their work. Maybe you'll meet them at the workplace, but they're very reliable, they're very responsible, and they are interested in amassing wealth. That's what they're there for. Again, this could be a facet of you in 2018. Now, these are kind of the outer influences that may you may come across, maybe some dilemmas. You may have to make a choice. Again, if you're embroiled in a relationship, uh, like the Three of Cups I mentioned before, Maybe one of them is a Taurus and one of them is a, is, a, is a water sign. Or what did I say? Like a, I don't know, some other sign. Um, you, may, you have to uh, make that decision, perhaps. For other people, it might even be about uh, relocation because we have here the three of wands can actually be traveling 
a somewhere far flung location, maybe for your work, maybe you have a product that you want to introduce to a whole new country. And uh, so it's a very expansive influence, but it may be like a dilemma for you. Like, you know, I don't really want to make that change. This is a very radical change. One thing I would say is, you're wherever you live right now, that's not going anywhere. So, you know, you, you can always go back if that's what you want to do. Even if you don't like change, sometimes doing something totally um, radical, even, you know, especially if, if, you have some offer, I mean, rather than turning it down, take advantage of it. Uh, the Three of Wands, again, uh, can point to, yeah, that Page of Wands on the top row, maybe somebody that you met, Fiery, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, and you're taking it to the next level. You're, maybe um, they are, you're separated from them, you've met them, but then they have to go uh, for work or what have you. And so you're going to uh, experience a bit of a, a separation. But perhaps uh, you might meet somebody while you're traveling, you never know. Nine of Wands. Again, I, I get this fire energy might not be their sun sign, but they definitely, if it's somebody who is, they have that kind of a, it, you know, it's funny, water signs and fire signs have, emo, are emotional, but fire signs are more, it's more like passion, where it's just like, they're very into whatever it is that they're doing, and they're, um, and they, they may even talk loud, they definitely have that sense of, uh, an epic quality about them. However, um, it could be too that there may be something that is keeping you, because the, the Nine of Wands can be a card of some kind of a barrier. So perhaps there will be delays in traveling if you want to go. Maybe you want to just branch out. And yet the there's like this... Uh, Thing that's keeping you from doing it right away. It, it depends on, and it could be like, because this is not you, this is like uh, outer influences. So somebody may have their wall up, maybe it's a fire sign individual, and they are not ready to commit or they're not ready to share with you, but you have hit it off emotionally. And Seven of Swords. Be careful about, if you have an idea, be careful. Because somebody may be trying to steal it. Uh, you may have someone who is not a uh, good, they may be a bad actor. Um, I've been get, I got a couple of swords cards that are kind of on the negative side. So if this is a fellow air sign, it would be Gemini, Libra, or a fellow Aquarius. And um, if you know any right now, it would probably be someone you already know. But uh, I have a feeling with that page of wands that some of you have come up with these wonderful ideas. And so you may be eager to share them, but you have to be careful. And I did get another card that goes along with this, talking about the spiritual lesson. Five of Swords. You see those other people there. Five of Swords sometimes means empty victory, so uh, you don't want to ever do anything underhanded just to get ahead, because it's, you know, the judgment card is all about uh, the chickens coming home to roost, you know, uh, what you sow, so shall you reap, but I feel like this could be somebody else that you trust, and you see there are other people, so this is in a, like, if you work in a business with other people, Someone could be trying to um, sabotage you or, you know, especially using slander, you know, spreading lies about you. With the Seven of Swords here, we could be talking about someone who is doing something stealing. You know, it could be physical theft, um, but it can also be intellectual theft. 
and it could be in the workplace. And, um, you know, if you're working with other people as the Three of Cups, it might be like a, that you've bonded with some other people, but perhaps there are some uh, untrustworthy people that you have to deal with. But even in your private life, make sure that, um, you know, like, let me just say this, because I was kind of like having difficulty explaining the nine of, a nine of Wands. If you meet somebody and you think you've hit it off and then they are kind of like secretive and you can't really get a good handle on them, they don't seem to really be being straightforward with you, be very careful that they are reputable people, that they're not, uh, and this could apply, to tell you the truth, this could apply to any uh, professional situation that you're dealing with, whether you're, you know, going to a new job or you're dealing with um, clients or companies and they're being very vague, be careful because they could be underhanded. And, um, you know, this card, the Three of Wands, is very expansive and it's like you want, you may have a lot of um, creative ideas in 2018 and you're just very excited, you're just like, the Page of Wands is like the town crier wanting to shout, shout it out to everybody, but you have to protect yourself. And um, the outcome is the Queen of Swords, so this is, again, connected to you. And and it's I like this because it's kind of like putting your intellect above your emotions and not allowing your feelings to get the best of you, but... With Aquarius, it's nice to see the queen show up because it allows you to have that heart chakra open where you can, you know, the, the, the feminine principle is all about receptivity, creativity, and with ideas, that's really wonderful. But it's not allowing yourself to get manipulated by other people. So if there's any personal relationship that's experiencing problems it's like you're able to put your head over your heart but at the same time you're able to generate creative ideas that can really advance your life so that's wonderful okay Aquarius I hope you enjoyed this if you'd like a private reading um, please click on the link below um, I do have natal chart interpretations and you can get that for uh, the next year for the new year um you know find out about your personal patterns plus the highlights for certain areas of your life and i have other types of readings rainandmoonastrology.com the link is below take care bye